sales group will to know the history of Cebu. Join me. And don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to like. And of course, subscribe and click that notification bell. See you! Okay, the first room in the museum is the pre-colonial artifacts. It means that dito yung mga items that were found or that were here in Cebu before the Spaniards came in. Okay, we're now inside the first room here in the Museum of Cebu and we're advised that we can take pictures, we can also take video, but we cannot hold anything, do not touch anything. Okay, so see ya. Okay, in this room you will see that there is a certain kind of culture that is already here in the Philippines, especially here in Cebu because you will see that they were already using their own uh, you know, utensils and pots and uh, dishes made of clay so you will you, 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 you kind of realize na oh, hindi naman pala Spanish talaga ang nagdala ng, uh, ng ating culture we already have a culture but somehow they were erased whenever I go to a certain place or when I'm new to a place I make it a point to go to a museum buti na lang when I uh, told my cousin na that I really want to go to museum he said na may nakita do siya museum although he has n never been here and thankfully it was also the, their first time to come here and I'm very glad that they, we decided to come here. Look oh, I saw that only in books but I see it here in person. And in the next room are items that they found during or they preserved during the Spanish colonial times. So here you can see yung mga le writings, mga letters, and this is a sword. And sabi ko mapagkita ko is, ilan na kayang napatay ng sword na ito? He <laughs> he It is really amazing whenever I go to a museum that I see all these things in no unknown pa and I imagine the people who are using these and it's also you know so we're grateful to the people who you who took their time to preserve these and made us uh, appreciate it right now like this the saints that they used to uh, have in their houses and look oh it's really very very old it looks very very old and it kind of gi gives you a nostalgic feeling and this is the replica of the real uh santo nino that they found or that they found that they were that was not really actually burned during the fire I really commend the people who make it a point to, you know, preserve these things for us to appreciate and look at and, you know, you will learn a lot from looking at the past. They say that 
uh, you will if you don't look at the past then you cannot go to the future uh, you see all uh, the the I think that are the, those are the the utensils or the 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 nails that they use mm. diba? so amazing Okay, in this room naman, uh, you will see all the paraphernalia that the revolutionists used to uh, to go against the Spanish regime. And here, it's also very historical because you see how they uh, decided to go against the Spanish. And usually, hindi siya masyado, hindi siya, it was first a peaceful, peaceful, uh, revolution so in terms of writing against the spanish yan yeah, mga katimoneros i really salute them they are really our heroes they stood up for our country and you will also realize that the revolution was not only based in luzon because as this museum shows there were also a lot of uh revolutionists against the i mean uh, those who went against the Spanish here in Cebu so that is already very nice to know you know you really learn a lot from going to the museum and when you see all these you know artifacts you just can't help but imagine what it was like living in those times what was the you know the, the weather like was it you know, clean air pa noon, no pollution, and no, no, and no, and not any kind of pollution because maybe mas clean, cleaner pa yung world noon. Okay, the next room are artifacts that were found or used during the Commonwealth era. So the Commonwealth of the Philippines uh, was the administrative body that governed the Philippines from 1935 to 1946. That is, of course, aside from a period of exile in the Second World War from 1942 to 1945 when Japan occupied our country. Well, some people may say that we are only, it was only a puppet uh, government. But what I can say is that I'm very thankful that uh, the, the, the U.S. Uh, gave us our edu educational system, which the Spanish did not give us because they don't want, don't want us to be educated. According to DepEd, a highly centralized public school system was installed in 1901 by the Philippine Commission by virtue of Act No. 74. The implementation of this act created a heavy shortage of teachers, so the Philippine Commission authorized the Secretary of Public Instruction to bring to the Philippines 600 teachers from the USA. Meron din naman na ambag ang Spanish. During their Spanish period, Tribal tutors were replaced by Spanish missionaries and education became religion-oriented. Education became exclusively for the elite in the early years under the Spanish rule. Later, however, education became accessible to Filipinos with the enactment of the Educational Decree of 1863.
in the museum you can see the typewriters that they used uh, to write all these uh, journalism against the Spaniards so this tool was really very important that in those era and you know the clothes that they wore was still the Maria Clara so it's really very nice to reminisce about that and you know the culture that we had then so really Filipino Now we go to the Japanese occupation or World War II time. And here in this room, you can see the money that they used during the Japanese occupation. Look, ang dami and now it's useless. So you must always remember that someday maybe money will be useless to you. It's more important to be kind and you know, to not always think about money. It's not the most important thing. I also came about a picture of an unidentified Japanese soldier and it makes me think asa na kaya ang family niya or asa na kaya yung mga, nin, mga kanya mga uh, maybe great grandsons or granddaughters And there is also a warning sign that was maybe uh, posted during the war and it's really very scary to see that you know right now we, we are enjoying the freedom and we should be very thankful that we don't have those things that you know will scare us. In the end, nobody really wins a war. Kahit na sabihin natin na nalo ang mga allied, marami pa rin namatay. So it really doesn't, it really doesn't pay to, you know, create war. And I think the reason why they place a lot of memorabilia from the war here so that we will always be uh, reminded that we should not go into war anymore.
Now we're going to another part of the building or the museum and you look at the steep stairs and and you will realize na marami na sigurong na bago here but still the structure is there the foundation is there and by the way this uh, place is formerly a prison jail a provincial jail they call Carcel de Cebu now we go to a room where in somehow it's explained how Cebu recovered from the war and as I can see here I think Abaca was a major uh, commodity that they sold and that was uh, one of the major products of Cebu and this is why Cebu right now is a economic hub of the Philippines. Now we go to the room where we can see the memorabilia of Senator Vicente Rama. He is recognized as the father of Cebu City. He authored the bill for its cityhood which was approved into law by October 20, 1936. This is according to Wikipedia. We can also see the family tree of the Rama clan and we now realize it's that Rama is a prominent family here. And the guide also showed me the father of Annabel Rama, who is Captain Lorento G. Rama. Now we go to the back part of the uh, museum, which is the Cebu Media Gallery, and look. Oh, it's really uh, an old building because parang um, nilagyan nila ng foundation so parang bumaba na yung building and now you see the big version of the personal computer look oh it's very big but now it's shrunken into a very small laptop or a PC so amazing right There were a lot of uh, famous media personalities from Cebu or even here working in Cebu and as you can see it's very Cebu was very modern actually Cebu is actually like the like Manila now it's uh, the second most uh, let's say uh, economically speaking biggest second biggest in the Philippines yung ano di shrunk na computer now we go to like a courtyard here inside the Sub Museum Subbu and by the way this structure was designed by Domingo de Escondrillas in 1869 the lone architect in Cebu at the time Spain, the spread and 
Ano ito, ma'am? Ano ito, ma'am? Marami ka na ito. Ito na mo, lang siya sa iyo. Mmm, okay. Okay, that wraps up our tour of Museo Subu. And thank you for watching. And as always, I say, God bless you, DC always, and I love you all. See you on my next episode.